The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 18th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early, please. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And, of course, inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, in our Tigers, General, any ping will do. But quite frankly, I prefer the private kind. It's just easier for me to be able to make sure I keep track of what your request is. But Peak G wants to take a look at SWIR as an example. We'll most certainly do that here uh, in a few uh, minutes out there. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. Otherwise, let's go and get this show started on a wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you get all the USMCs trading the downside. Of course, we want to go figure out what that meaning is. You got the Dow off 900 points, basically. The S&P off 130. NASDAQ 100, about 500. Russell's down 53. Semi's off 113. Tranny's down 942. Doesn't look very good out there. Gold is flat, trading at 1818. Silver's off 18 cents, trading at 2157. Still wants higher price. Lights we crude off 287. 109.53 is the print there. Natural gas is basically flat at 828. And the 30 year treasury is up one point and six ticks, trading out at 139.27. Lean the charge. Dollar wise, the upside. So not all retailers are getting hit hard. This is Burlington Stores. That's the leader. Dollar wise, up 10 bucks, nearly 6%. Bright Green Corporation is bright and green today. It's up 35%, nearly 9 bucks there. Uh, D Local Limited is up 5 bucks. TJ. X companies, so, so not all retail getting hit at all. That's up 9%, five buckaroonies. Now to the downside, AutoZone. It's not in a good zone. It's off about 11% or 207 bucks. Amazon, $137, nearly 6%. Google, 69, 3%. Booking Holdings, 3%, 66. And you've got Chipotle off 63 bucks. So there's some movers, but mostly shakers. Now, let's go back. Uh, we, we covered this at the 1 p.m. update. Just want to make it kind of quickly just because I only have a few moments there. So if we go back, we just simply take a look at the volume right now. And this is something that you can do at home as well. We're just taking a look at the volume of the index ETF. So that's a SPY, Q's, Diamonds, Russell 2000. If you take a look at the SPYs, the volume that it's going up against is the swing point for May 12th. That swing point has volume of 125 million. We so far have done 44 million. This is gigantic light volume. Does it matter? It may matter. It may matter. It depends upon the close. Now, if price closes below 395.80, even with light volume, it still suggests that price could move and test that swing point low or more likely just the bottom of its profile. So its profile is at 389.60. That's your support level. A close above 395.80 today is going to be a test and rejection on light volume. That would suggest an A to B equals CD to the upside, perhaps, or at least a move up to the top of that profile. And that's at 416.31. The Q's also we've been lower their swing point had volume of 121 million we've done 38 i get but if this closes below 295.75 suggests run to at least 289.48 a close back above it is going to suggest the queues are going to make run for 317. i wish i could tell you at four o'clock exactly where price is going to be i can't but we'll take a look at intraday charts see if we see any bottoming signals and so forth out there but it's still going to be about the end of the day 
Speaking of the end of the day, the Dow Diamonds are treating it to their swing point from May the 12th. That had volume of 7 million shares, 6.7 to be exact. You're at 1.7 right now. Not even close when it comes to volume. So you need a rejection, which means a close above 319.43. Now, in this case, price is testing the support of its profile. That's the support of the profile on the Dow Diamonds. And that is at the 318.26 level. Nonetheless, you still need a rejection of price. That would be 319, a close above 319.43. The Russell 2000 would have to get all the way back to 174.34. Not that it can't do that, but it's not back there as we speak right now. So it's just the other three, the Qs, the Spies, and the Diamonds, that you should focus on and pay attention to. So light volume pullback out there. What I did mention, or I wrote into the Tigers Den there, is look, if this is a liquidation situation that's going on, then the technical patterns and everything I talked to you about here today really won't matter. And I don't think that's where we're at right now. I think this is just a, a normal way that uh, a market's going to make a bottom that's going to last for at least a couple of weeks. I'd say two to five weeks out here. But we'll take things one step at a time. And this was the first step was to understand the volume matrix. Now, we have the spot volatilics that I believe is trading above its 50. Well, I know it's trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. Let's go take a look at that. And that's always troublesome. Because that's when, you know, surprises to the downside could be uh, swift swooshes. Here you can see a big move. Now it's up today, the spot volatility, that is, up by 13.5%. If you get a one-day rate of change above 10% plus the light volume pullback out there, that surely should lead to some type of uh, rally overnight or early in the morning. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later on in the show as well as we take a look at signals out here. So what else should we look at out here? Let's go take a look. What's the New York Stock Exchange? What's its advanced decline oscillator doing? Back below zero. So closed above zero yesterday. It needs two consecutive closes above zero to suggest that buyers are the ones that are in control. So this will be an end of the day reading as we speak. So nothing there to really report on other than just what I have shared with you thus far. But we really need to know what this looks like at the end of the day. So now... Let's go switch over and let's go through our multi-panel time frame charts here and take a look at the index ETFs. Uh, I'm sorry, the index ETFs. Let's go take a look at the futures contracts. And we'll begin by starting out with the NQ, since that's what I have on my screen. So the NQ on a daily basis is now back below that red oscillator and change line. That means we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And that would suggest, wouldn't be surprised, to see the NQ get down and test 11.875. That is the bottom of its profile. 300-minute chart, price ran into resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level of 12,553. There's no profile support here, so not much to assist us. The two-hour time frame chart is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. This two-hour time frame is going to complete its bar at 2 p.m. So it says you could get bar number nine at 4 p.m. coming into the close. So you get a bad close out here. You get a high spot volatility index. Uh, what I mean by that, a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. You start looking for bottoming signals on the intraday time frame charts out here. The 60-minute chart did form a nice little TD nine count bottom. But it, in order to maintain that, price has to close. Now, I don't know that it can do this. So, well, it certainly can. It's only 114. But price has to close back above 12 112.75. Man, you know, that looks like it might be a stretch out here. So, based upon the intraday signals, TD9 count that looks like on the 60 minute is going to be violated out here. Looks like uh, we moved down to that 11.875 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's uh, do this here. Let's go to our first request. That was from uh, Peak G inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And Peak wanted to take a look at Sierra Wireless. We've got that up on our screen here. SW. I are, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, Peak is in this. Uh, uh, so uh, bravo to you. And his question is, uh, should he add to it or where should he add to it? So if we take a look, we'll take a look at the larger time frame first. That's the monthly chart. So you are trading above. It's TD9 count breakdown level, 1981. Month is not over, obviously. But the resistance area is going to be the TD9 count top. And that was from January 21 peak. And that's at 2222, and you're trading at 2138. Difficult for me to be able to determine whether or not uh, price is going to be able to take that out. If it does, you then have a move up to the 3005 level. But hard for me to suggest that you buy something as it's trading into resistance or potential resistance out there. So that's what the monthly chart tells us. Looks good, but, uh, you know, it's got to prove itself to us. If we look at the weekly chart out here, weekly chart looks uh, very good. Uh, price is trading into a potential resistance point. That's at 21.85. That's a TD9 count breakdown level out there. So that suggests a caution out here, but it does look very good. There is an A to B equals CD pattern. I can't draw it in here on the white background charts. We can on the black background charts, but you can see the A to B point. I can do this most certainly. And that's draw the A to B point out here. And then we'll just go ahead and move that over to the C point just to give you a kind of see where this is at in the price projection area. Whoops, sorry about that. The system is slow. Don't like when the system is slow. Didn't think I had too much running on it. So here you're already at the one to one level. Now this may do more than a one to one, and likely will do more than a one to one. A to B equals CD to the upside. But a bearish reversal candle would form. That would then confirm a sell the D point, and that's what would really that's what you'd be looking for in order to find you know where is it that you would add to the position. And I would say on if you were to get a top. It would be the, my first target, unless there's a new profile that forms, would be its oscillator and change line, currently at 1876. We don't have any signal to suggest that that's what's going to unfold right now, just giving you the view of what could unfold. But based upon the pattern of being at the one-to-one -one level of the A to B equals CD, I say now is not the time to add to that position. TD9 count top that is in place right now on the 195-minute chart. 
No other topping patterns that have confirmed. Well, 30-minute chart has a confirmed Rosemont indicator top out there. So tough right now, uh, Peak, to tell you where to add to because we need to get a top that takes hold, then take a look at some intraday charts and see what kind of bottoming patterns might form out there. And so I'd be guessing right now. And there's no reason for me to guess. You're in a good trade. I don't have any reasons to suggest that you exit that trade, but you should know that you are approaching some resistance levels and it could get a bit bumpy and we could put the fastened seatbelt sign on. So it looks like a great trade. That is SWIR, that is Sierra Wireless. And uh, thanks for the request and have a, a wonderful Wednesday. Now, I don't have any other requests at this stage here. So um, let's just go back to taking a look at the multi time frame equity future contracts out here so we were take a look at the nqs let's go take a look at the es mini out here and again we're just looking for any kind of patterns in the intraday time period so let's get this a moment here to populate repopulate <laughs> and in the meantime probably i should tell you a, a joke or two it would be great if i was a good joke teller i'm a good joke listener but uh, don't usually retain those uh, those things for for some reason. So I can't really tell you a good joke. We we could talk about the hockey games last night. Um, I did not stay up to watch that Colorado. I did watch. I did stay up to watch the Colorado St. Louis game. So I was up pretty late. And then when it went to overtime, I was like, hey, I don't have the time <laughs> to to stay up because you know you never know how many overtimes that can go into. So this is my favorite time of the year. But now we've got the ES mini charts. So let's go back to those. So on a daily time frame, price is below that red oscillator and change line, good signal. Price pulling back to test support. Support will be 38.99. We can see that the swing point from May the uh, 12th is that what, what's the day? Uh, May, May the 12th is being tested. So that high out there, we already established that volume is on the at least the index ETFs really light volume on the pullback. We'll assume the same thing here in the ES mini. So test and rejection of 36.9175. Right now we're at 39.49. Uh, test rejection of that level. You know, would be a bullish signal or could be a bullish signal. Five hour time frame chart, no topping pattern, but with price below its oscillator and change on, maybe pulling back to its breakout level. So that's 39.15. No signal here on a 120 minute time frame chart. On the 60 minute time frame chart, it did form a, much like the uh, NQ or NQ, it did form a TD9 count bottom, but it looks like that may get violated. It's only 123, so hard to make that call. But with regard to where the close needs to be in order to maintain that TD9 count, it needs to be above 39.55 and a quarter. When I look at the 30-minute chart, no bottom signal there, none on the 15, none on the 10-minute chart. You do have a Rosemont indicator bottom that is attempting to form on the five-minute chart. But, you know, and so that's how you start. You watch the five-minute chart. If that gives you a bottom signal, what goes on on the 10-minute, then you go to the 15, the 30, so on and so forth. So how do we summarize the ES Mini at this stage here? It looks like price wants to get back and test that 38.99 level. That is the bottom of its daily profile. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future contract. Again, give this a moment here to uh, populate. And uh, uh, what games are tonight? Uh, that's a good question. So we should go see what games are on uh, this evening here. See if we can pull that up here rather quickly. Say, so, oh, well, this is going to be a good game. The Rangers in Carolina. And then you got then you got the so th this is pretty cool. So we've got the two Florida teams that are playing each other, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the uh, Predators from down here, and uh, um, and then in Canada you've got the uh, I, I think it's Alberta. I think both of these cities, Calgary and Edmonton, I think both are in Alberta if I'm not mistaken. So you've got that, which is going to be a cool game out there. Now Edmonton. Uh, I used to go to their games. I used to own a couple of stores inside the Edmonton Mall. This is a long time ago. So this is back in the 1980s or what have you. Back then, the Edmonton Oilers, and they still I assume they still have the ice rink inside the uh, mall out there, a full-blown Olympic uh, ice rink out there, and the Oilers used to practice there. And that was a pretty cool thing. Don't know if they do that any longer. I think they've got a new stadium since then. But anyway, now that we've got the Dow Equity Future contract, it may be pulling back to about the 31,463 level. That's the bottom of its profile. 31,556, that's a five-minute time frame breakout level. That could be another area of support. 
I don't see anything on the 120 minute chart. The 120 minute chart, from a bottoming standpoint, that is, could suggest a move to 31,148. The uh, TD nine count pattern looks like it'll be violated on the uh, 60 minute time frame out here. No bottom signal on the 30, nothing on the 15, really nothing overall. So the Dow equity future contract looks like it still has further to go. And uh, I'd say the the ideal target would be that 31,436, the bottom of its profile. Let's finish this off. I take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, and uh, Peak is pulling for the Panthers. Uh, that, you know, I, I, I uh, since uh, since I'm really a Red Winger, if you will, but uh, I've been in Florida now for 40 years, and so I went from a Red Winger to a Lightning to a Bolter, and now that I'm down in South Florida, you know, uh, so I'll go with either team. The good the good news is, Peak, is that we're going to have one team in Florida representing us going to the next round. So I will take that. That will be good. Now we got the Russell 2000 up on our screens right here. We'll leave that up. When we come back from this break, uh, we will uh, go ahead and uh, review those. Of course, I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648 or send me an email and send it to Steve at tfnm.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, Louis Lou is a Ranger fan, and I've got to tell you, folks, if ever you, uh, even if you're not a hockey fan, there is no better place to see a hockey game than in Madison Square Garden. The New York fans are just simply wonderful when it comes to uh, ice hockey out there. And, uh, and there's a lot of other, I've been fortunate enough to be at a lot of uh, other ice hockey stadiums, Philly, uh, the, the uh, um, Boston, 
that's another great place to see a game. But there's nothing like watching a uh, Rangers game. Uh, it is just I wish I wish that even the Florida fans are good, but like on a decibel level of Florida pa- fans versus the Ranger fans, you know, we're maybe about fifty percent of uh, what it is that they are able to put out there in energy. Back anyways, back to the Russell two thousand. We can see on a daily time frame that uh, price is pulling back to its red oscillator and change line. So this is the strongest of the four equity future contracts. Support level here, potential support level on the five-hour time frame chart is at 1770. The 120-minute chart, bar number eight sitting in support. That's at the breakout level support of 1781. TD9 count on the 60-minute sitting at support. So it's interesting. So maybe the Russell 2000 is the one to watch for any kind of uh, turn in the uh, market. Uh, it's got all the types of potential bottoming signals that you could want from the five hour, two hour and the one hour time frame chart. Not so much when we take a look at the uh, 30 minute chart and nothing on the well, the 10 minute charts got a rose momentum indicator bottom as does the five minute. Um, so I'd say watch the Russell 2000 for signals out here. Price is back in support. If you're a day trader and you're looking for some type of uh, move out here I'd, I'd, at this stage here, I'd focus on the Russell versus the ES or the NQ out there but that's just stevie so uh, so that's what's going on as we take a look at the four equity futures contracts let's go we got a couple questions that have come in so let's not get behind on those and the first one coming in from mike and uh mike in portugal and mike says i see 120 minute td eight count for the esnn q also the 0.6 retracement from where I highs to lows so let's go look at that retracement levels here and we'll change screens to do that we'll use the uh, stevie retracement tool and that is uh, much more accurate uh, and easier for me to deal with on the black background screen so let's get to the intraday charts here and on the es mini we can see exactly what mike in portugal is talking about so if we go from the low out here that took place at about two o'clock in the afternoon on may the 12th this is a 120 minute time frame chart and we go up to the high that took place yesterday at 6 p.m we can see that the 0.618 retracement level and these here i use 0.382 618 786 and that's it and uh, those are your fibonacci sequence numbers out here and they're typically like floors like an elevator or like an escalator so what mike knows what you know what i know is if this 39.46 level fails to hold price, then that's a suggestion that price will get back to the 0.786 level, go down to the next floor. And that's at about 39.06. Now, Mike had mentioned on the ES, uh, I don't have that up that easily. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me uh, a second here. But this is the, so this is the ES mini in the 120 minute chart. Let's do the same thing. Let's go over to the NQ and uh, we'll put those retracement levels up for you. And again, we're going to go from the low to the high. And I'm sure that uh, Mike is dead on balls accurate out here. Let's see, where was that low? Was that 11.693, 11.689. So that's the low out here. We've got that. Let's go from that low to the high, the high that took place at, again, about six o'clock last evening. And price is just sitting just below really right on it 12022 is the print 12034 is a 0.618 level again if this does not hold price then what we're looking at is a move to the 0.786 area now mike you and i have differing numbers out here you said you see the 120 minute td8 count out there i'm assuming you meant that or you thought that your screen shows you in bar number eight and so let me just go ahead since we've got differing numbers i'm going to go ahead and show you what i've got here's a 120 minute chart for the es mini and actually, what I've got is that we are just simply in bar number four. So don't know if there's a difference in the uh, data feeds uh, that you've got out here. I'll put the NQ up as well. Of course, it's going to populate everything, but just want to make sure that uh, we cover all of our friends and family out here. So let's see where we're at, at least on Stevie's charts, with regard to the two-hour TD9 count pattern. And uh, this here should populate momentarily now. On the NQ, I do have a bar number eight for the two-hour time frame chart. Interesting. So on, I, I've got that for you on the uh, two-hour time frame chart, but I do not have that on the ES Mini. So the NQ, I've got it. Yes, I agree with you, but on the ES Mini, uh, my chart shows something different. So I do hope that that helps you out, and hopefully you were able to grab that uh, off of the uh, either Tiger TV or Inside the Den. Let's go to our next uh um, email out here. This one coming in from uh, Alan. Alan I. And Alan uh, says, hey Steve, uh, where do you see Chenier Energy going? And uh, so let's go take a look at it. 
Make sure we're on the right screen out here. Yep. Okay. So let's go to Chenier. And by the way, that ticker symbol, as you'll see, we pulled up is LNG. So we're trying to figure out where is it that LNG is headed to. Right now, Chenier Energy is trading out at a 133.15. It has a valid TD9 count top and wave number seven top for its monthly time frame. What that would suggest, Alan, longer term, bigger picture, is that price will target its oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 118.50. I'm not saying 118.50 is the exact number of where price will get to. That's just simply the number to take a look at as a guideline out there. On a weekly time frame, we just have a sideways consolidation. So I don't have a topping pattern. I've got nothing, not a zip zilt. So it's a monthly chart here that's driving things. On the daily time frame, we have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. And if we get a close below 135.07, that is the bottom of its daily profile. If we get that today and tomorrow, well, one is going to suggest pulling back to its recent lows, but it could also be suggesting a move to 114.21. You can't go there until we see how price tests March 15th low, how it tests the April 25th low, how it deals with the May 12th low out there. But at this stage, you've got topping patterns to suggest that price move back there. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm just doing this off screen, off the screen that you're looking at, is price is trading in that May 12th low, or that May 12th swing point, I should say. 1.8 million shares, and you're back there with 700,000 shares. So very much like the market in Shinier Energy is pulling back with light volume. Now, what you need out here, Alan, is a test and rejection. That means it closed today back above 133.07. You're at 132.97. That would be a test and reject on that swing point. And then, you know, even though you're closing below the bottom of its daily profile, would say, well, you don't have enough sellers to bust it down. Maybe it's going to try to bust it up again. That could only take us to the 138.09 level. As we look at the intraday time frame charts out here, I don't see a whole lot to assist us. So back to your question was, where do you see um, Chenier Energy headed to? And... Uh, you know, that weekly chart, I think, really tells the picture, which is just that it's in a sideways consolidation. That sideways consolidation seems to have been established by that TD9 count and a wave number seven top here. I'll just simply expand out that monthly chart so that way you can see those patterns out here. There you go. So you can see letter number G on your uh, screen out there. So I hope that helps you out. Alan, thanks so much for taking the time to write in, and best of luck to you with regard to LNG. Uh, so no other questions so far. I don't believe there's anything inside. Oh, I take this back. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. Uh, uh, Alton. Oh, I, it was Alan I said. I think it's Alton. I apologize if I, mis if I uh, mispronounce your name. And Alton is, uh, is a Bolts fan. He says they're going to be a three-peat out there, which would be very, very cool. And look, you've got to admit, I mean, um, Kucherov is uh, so – I think one of the, one of the best players that I've that I've ever seen, skill wise, puck wise, skate wise, assist wise, uh, scoring wise, was Pavel Datsyuk. He was a Detroit Red Wing, and I would have to put uh, Kucherov really up in that category. Did you see him play last night? Did you see that deke that he had? He is an amazing player. He wrote his gift. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got a request to go take a look at Mosaic. Ticker symbol there is MOS. Uh, as we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, things still look pretty good, although it did confirm, I take that back, it did confirm a sell the D point pattern. It did that with the A to B equals CD that was confirmed with a bearish shooting star candle. Now, because you have that valid top on a monthly time frame, this would suggest that price and its oscillator and change line should test each other. Now, the OUL right now is at 48.65. Don't know that that's where price is going to head to. It could be a combination of the line moving up, price moving back or sideways out there. But you should see price and that line test each other. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count top, which has taken price back to support. Now, support here is between the range of 52.12 and 58.15. We say that because of the bullish structure profile. We know where the buyers are. They're at 52.12. We know where buyers and sellers are. They are at uh, 58.15. And we know where sellers are. They're at 73.24. So we have more buyers lined up in the 52.12, 58.15 level out there. That's why we refer to it as a bullish structured profile. But price did pull back and test at least a level of support. Now, price is below that green oscillator and change line. That's acted as resistance. So it is not out of the woods to the upside. Daily time frame. Confirmed with a Rhodes momentum indicator and a TD9 count top. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside. That would take us to, it looks like about 50 bucks or so. Here's the A to B level. Let's go add this to our C point out here. Let's see where that gets us to. And yeah, so it gets us to about 50 bucks, give or take out there. So that hasn't completed. And price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. So in Mosaic, you're watching to the upside, 6606. You close above that, and then maybe it says, well, that A to B equals CD pattern may not complete at all. You close below support, which is 5668, then that's going to suggest that you head back to 50. Right now, you just have your good old-fashioned, what we'll call a consolidation with inside support and resistance, and that is set up by the daily profile. 195-minute chart, TD9 count top, price is pulled back to that oscillator and change line. If that gives it up, the price is going to move back to 58.31, perhaps even 56.30. The other intraday charts out here, not much to write home about. 58.20 is a price target on the 30-minute time frame chart. So it does at this stage look like Mosaic wants to head lower. you got the top on the monthly. You've got the top on the weekly. You've got the top on the daily. And we don't have any kind of a bottom pattern yet that is formed out there. So, But right now we have to go with the consolidation sideways. So I hope that helps out. With regard to Mosaic, there's a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at Amazon. That is for G Motion out here. And uh, so we'll go ahead and let this populate. And the question is no, the, the question is just really to take a look at Amazon. So let's let this uh, populate out here. The monthly chart, which has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, 
suggest that price could be targeting its breakout level, 1626.03. The weekly chart has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. It did that last week. So let's get wait till this uh, wait till I can pull this chart back. But I can see that pattern in there. We'll just simply expand it. There we go. Uh, and now let's. There we go. So you can see this did more than a one to one A to B equals C D. It completed the pattern because it was a bullish hammer candle. Now the ideal place to buy a hammer candle, well, really the ideal place would be right at the bottom. But sometimes it's at about the center of the wick, which it looks like that's where Amazon is targeting out there. Uh, but you do have a confirmed bottom on the weekly time frame. On the daily time frame, you have a TD nine count bottom. So let me go take a look at. I can see. Take a look at AMZN on my black background charts. Let me make sure that that's not where I'm at. Yeah, and I just want to take a look at the volume may uh, aspect of it. So on the 12th, May the 12th, this did volume. You can't see it on my screen that you're looking at. 6.6 uh, .6 million shares. You're pulling back with 3.2 today. A rejection though of price requires a close above 22.15.61. Doesn't look like we'll get that. So perhaps what price is doing on the daily time frame is going to go target the uh, support level, and that's the bottom of that profile at 2095. Intraday wise, what does Stevie have for you? The 30 minute chart is getting ready to form a TD nine count bottom. It will complete the nine count at two. Of course, the pattern will actually be completed at 230 because it can be a lower low on the bar following bar number nine out there. Overall, with regard to Amazon, you got a nice Gartley buy pattern on the weekly basis. Until that gets violated, that's the pattern that's in play. What price may be doing is just simply pat is pulling back on light volume, but it may want to test that support level, and that'd be at 2095.30. So G Motion, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. The next request is to take a look at uh, PLTR. Let me make sure that's uh, I think that's Palantir, but let me yeah PLTR. So let me get that uh, fired up on the screen here. And that is for Sandy. So PLTR. And let's go take a look at the Palantir. Uh, what is your near-term price target, I suppose? So what Palantir is doing, as soon as these charts here populate, what you will see, what Palantir is doing is consolidating Sandy with inside its daily profile. So you have support at 690. And it's a bullish structured profile. And you have resistance, this strong resistance at A27. It did close above it yesterday. Stevie requires two closes above it in order to give you a breakout message. So knowing that it has not been able to bust it to the upside, perhaps what Palantir is going to do is try to bust it to the downside. As soon as this populates, you'll be able to see those charts. But to bust it to the downside would be trading back into support. And so I'm going to switch uh, screens here. Oh, well, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. There we go. Okay. So now you can see this is on the daily time frame here. You've got you can see the profile and it's bullish in structure. And with price trading below the red oscillator and change line, you can see how price has been unable to take out the top of that profile, Sandy. So this could be a pullback to the 690 to 735 area. Now we like on the weekly basis. I'd say we like the fact that last week what it generated was a bullish hammer candle that would or could have confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. What do you mean would or could have, Steve-O? Well, we also have a gap to the downside. So you have one bullish candle and you have one bearish candle. If I were to fill in the gap in price with a color body of the uh, candle out here, it wouldn't be a hammer candle. So in that instance, I'm never really sure what to do. So when you're not sure what to do, you move on and you take a look at the other charts. Monthly in Palantir is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. We do know that a instrument can bottom on bar number eight. It just also has to form bar number eight, which is going to require a close below bar number five out there. So the monthly is too soon to call. The daily, from a bottom standpoint, what do we have out here? What did we have? I'm assuming we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, yeah, we probably do. I'm um, sure that we do. I'm pretty sure that we do. But, you know, whether we do or we don't at this stage here, because of that weekly potential bottom signal, you've just got a consolidation in between 690 and 827. Sandy, I hope that helps you. I don't really see anything else to assist us much with regard to the intraday charts out there. So we'll just simply uh, leave it there. And, of course, your question is, you know, what do I see near term? I, I suppose what I see near term is a further retracement out there. The only thing that changed that would be a close above 827 today. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in.
Uh, no other questions at this stage, unless there's something inside the Tiger's Den that I have overlooked. But um, And if I did, please retype that in, and I'll be sure to get to it. So in lieu of that, we're going to go to a break here in a, uh, about uh, four or five seconds. So no reason for me to pull anything up. If there's a question of Tiger's Den, now is the time to give it. Otherwise, I'll figure out how to sum up our last two minutes together. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at this 10-minute chart here for the NQ, and I'll put my cursor right at about the uh, 9 o'clock hour. Here's 8 o'clock, 8.30. Um, it, this, this looks to me like – so this looks to me like a trading desk that is liquidating positions and doing it uh, inside the NQ out here. And it's just this nice gradual decline, uh, very, um, very organized, very linear – would be the would be the point. Whenever I see linear moves like this that extend themselves for long period of times, to me, and I wish I could prove it, uh, just have a theory. 
It's a Stevie theory. It's a pretty good theory out there that this is liquidation that's going on. And the reason that I point that out is because when there's liquidation, if in fact that is the case out here, a lot of the technical terms and patterns uh, that we take a look at just simply go out the door. You know, liquidation is uh, I'm selling everything I need to to raise cash for whatever the reason might be. Now, where might price find support out here? So that's the question. Well, we've got the bottom of these daily profiles, bullish in structure in the ES mini. So very important level that must hold is 38.99. Is 38.99. 38.99. Inside the NQ, which is arguable, we just took a look at, which is a weak indice out here, is 11.875. Inside the Dow, the level is going to be. Geez, I need to pull this over here. Is uh, 31.435. Those are the levels to be watching. And then you got 1723 to 1748 inside the Russell 2000. And the question was, Steve, do you see a bounce today? And the answer is, um, I'm going to go to the NQ. And so I'm going to try to pull this chart up here. Even though uh, we're going to we're going to be running out of time, I'm going to get that up on our screen for us here momentarily. And the only way that I would be able to say yes to that would be to see some kind of bottoming pattern out here. And uh, just looking right now on the intraday charts, I don't think we've got anything. And uh, But just uh, keep watching, or I'll try to post something in the Tiger's Den if I'm in front of my computer. But as we speak right now, and it's taking a little bit longer here for these to populate. I don't see any bottoming signal. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday.